Cheers and welcome to this new tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is actually a quite a basic uh, topic uh, but I realized I never talked about that properly um, and so in this video I will talk about how to use the tenses in Italian and in particular about the tenses of the indicativo. Um, in a previous video, I've explained that uh, in Italian we have different moods. So we uh, not only have tenses like the present, the past, uh, but we also have moods. So we have the indicativo, which um, is about stuff that really happens, so reality. And congiuntivo, which is about possibility, probability, opinion. And so if you want to... Um, have another look at this, I will link the video in the description. And so this video will be about how to use the different tenses of the indicativo, which is actually the first uh, mood that you learn. So when you learn the presente, when you learn the imperfetto, uh, the um, passato prossimo, the futuro, all these tenses that you first learn, um, those are from the indicativo and uh, of course the indicativo has actually eight tenses so not only has the ones that I've mentioned so again the presente, passato prossimo, imperfetto and futuro which are actually the um, so those are the basic tenses that actually you need to talk but the um, indicativo is a sort of four tenses so there is a trapassato prossimo e passato remoto trapassato remoto and futuro anteriore uh, actually in my videos i've explained each one of these tenses so there are eight videos where you can go and have another look at these tenses how you make them how the conjugation works and how you use them singularly and so I will also link these uh, videos in the description. Uh, but so uh, let's bring all together and see how you use all the, these tenses. So the presente, um, you use it for um, a habit. So what you in general do, for example, um, when you say uh, I wake up at seven in the morning, then you can say mi sveglio alle sette. Uh, so that is a habit and you're using just the presente of svegliarsi, which is to wake up. Um, you can use it for something that is strange in general. Uh, for example, you can say uh, in winter, it, the weather is cold, usually, depending on where you live, of course. can also not be true, but uh, in general, if you live in, in Europe, winter is, is cold. And so you can say in inverno, fa freddo and so this fa is the presente from fare which is actually what what um, we use for to make to do um, or uh, you can use the presente for also sometimes what was happening at this uh, moment uh, we have another um, type of um, so another um, construction from for um, talking about what what we are doing in a precise moment and I will do another video about that uh, but sometimes in a mostly spoken language um, you can talk about you can use the presente also to talk about what you are doing in this moment like if you say uh, leggo un libro this means I'm reading a book uh, and so you're just using the presente from leggere uh, so this is mostly how you use the presente uh, going about the passato prossimo, um, the passato prossimo is for what happened at a certain point in the past. So something that has happened at a certain point and is, is finished. So what I always say also to my students, um, so imagine uh, time as a line, as a line. So the passato prossimo, so the present is just, yeah, right in the middle is what's happening now or what happens in general. Um, 
and the passato prossimo is a, a bit back and is a dot on this line. So it's something that has happened a, a while ago and has finished. And as a rule, um, it should be something that has happened not so long ago. Or like a week ago, two weeks ago, yesterday, um, as a rule. But uh, nowadays we actually use the passato prossimo also for that was what has happened um, actually a while ago, like two years ago, five years ago. We still use the passato prossimo nowadays. Um, so imagine like this and this will help you tremendously for how to use the passato prossimo. So just as much as the, the action is a, a dot on the timeline. Is something happened, concluded a bit ago or also a while ago. That was okay, as I said. Um, now, the imperfetto, imagine that it is like a segment, a small line on this timeline. Because with the imperfetto, the general idea is that um, you don't see the conclusion of what has happened. So it can also be concluded, but um, that's not the main idea that you are giving. Because um, with imperfecto, you use it for um, a description of something that was going on in the past. Uh, like, uh, you know, my previous house uh, was uh, small, for example. No, you would, you, to say a sentence like this, you would use imperfecto. So you would say, la mia casa era piccola. Um, so you use it for a description, as I said. You use it to explain why something happened in the past. In a sentence like, I didn't go to the party because uh, I, have, I had to study. So you will say, non sono uh, andato alla festa perché dovevo studiare. So dovevo, in that case, you are using the imperfetto. So, um, as I said, there are more rules. You can go to the video about the imperfetto to have another look at them more in detail but um so in this video we just give the general ideas and the general idea of an imperfect is that it's something uh an action where you don't see the conclusions like um as i mentioned also in the video in the other video the imperfect is also used to talk about habits in the past uh about something that was happening happening often in the past uh like uh, l'anno scorso um, andavo spesso in palestra. Um, so a sentence like this would be last year I was going often to the gym so it was happening it was happening hop, uh, often it was a habit in the past and so in that case it was used the imperfetto but so imagine a line so this can also help you understand better the difference between passato prossimo and imperfetto. So in passato prossimo, just imagine a dot, something concluded, you see the conclusion. Um, with imperfetto, it's just a segment, something that was going on in the past. And it could be concluded, could be not, you just don't see it from the sentence, not the idea that you are giving. Um, and so this, uh, both the imperfetto and the passato prossimo, those are back. So still on the timeline, those are back from the from the present, you're going up for the back. Um, but, and they can be happening at the same time. So they can be, you can have a dot above a segment, but that's the main difference. So the dot is the passato prossimo, happened, concluded. The segment is the imperfetto, what's going on? It could be at the same time. Just the quality is different. So the conclusion or not, is that in your side or not? Just think about that. Um, so think about if what you are doing is more like a dot or is it like a segment in the past. Um, now, other um, tenses that we have for the past, we have a lot of tenses for the past. So most tenses for the indicative are actually for the past. And uh, so the next one is the uh, passato remoto, which is actually, um, yeah, you learn it really if you need to. So if you are studying Italian at university, if you want to go for the Italian diploma, if you are interested in reading books, because there you will find it, 
but otherwise if you're in just everyday talk if you don't want to go that deep in um that deep in the um in your italian knowledge then passato remoto is actually something that you don't learn that much because it's full of irregular verbs full of irregularity full really full so um and we don't use it that much anymore in spoken language we don't use it that much so it's just that it's not worth the effort anymore if if your aim is just you know everyday talking because you go on holidays to italy and and you want you know to have a chit chat with it with the people or understand what's going on around you then the passato remoto is not that it's not worth the effort but of course if you want to learn the italian language well then if that's your aim and if you're going for the italian diploma if you are studying if, if you want to have a deep knowledge of the italian language then the passato remoto of course you need to learn it and that is also like so the passato remoto is still a dot on this timeline back from the present like the passato prossimo but the passato remoto is more near to the present while the passato remoto is further back you're going further away from the present so this is both a timeline here is the present here is the passato prossimo Here's the passato remoto. So, bo oh, all, all three of them, passato prossimo, uh, imperfetto, passato remoto, they are both back. And the passato remoto and passato prossimo, they are both points, but the passato remoto is for the back. And the imperfetto is also more or less contemporary with the passato prossimo, but the imperfetto is a line and the passato prossimo is a dot. So these are the main differences so far. Uh, so other two past sentences that we have for the indicativo are the trapassato prossimo and trapassato remoto. Now, there are also, I made also videos for these ones. So if you want more detail, go there and, you know, have another look. The trapassato prossimo um, is used for what happened before the three past tenses that I have mentioned. So um, if you it's actually so used when you have more actions or when further actions are implied in the sentence and it's for something that has happened before a past tense. So if I have two things happening and one has happened in the past and the other one has happened even before that, even earlier, then for this earlier action, I will have to use the trapassato prossimo. So if you imagine again your timeline, the trapassato prossimo is a dot on this timeline, but further back than everything else. So you're going further back. Yeah, I'm also going away from the screen. So because it's really further back. It's happened before. Uh, now it can be not so long before, it can be long before, but it's happened before. And um, the trapassato remoto is the same, but you can only, uh, only use it if you use it in combination with the passato remoto. So, um, the trapassato prossimo and the trapassato remoto, again on this timeline, are two dots, uh, are again, so dots, and a uh, happening before every other past tense. So if you start from the present, first you will have the passato prossimo and the imperfetto. Then you will have the passato remoto. Then you will have the trapassato. And so that's how it works. And so as I said, the trapassato uh, prossimo is used in combination with all the other uh, past tenses. While the trapassato remoto is used in combination with the passato remoto. So the trapassato is usually, in any way, as I said, um, used in combination with other tenses. Um, so you use it mostly when there are more actions combined. There are two tenses left for the indicativo, and they are future tenses. So we are going in the other direction. Yeah, actually, here yeah. <laughs> from, the, from the present. 
So, if you're sitting here, the past, so trapassato, uh, it, the two, trapassato, then passato remoto, then passato prossimo imperfetto, presente. Now we go here, future, futuro. The futuro is uh, to talk about what is gonna happen tomorrow. It doesn't matter when, it can be tomorrow, it can be next week, it doesn't matter, it can be in an hour. If I want to give the idea that it's happening after now, I will use the futuro. And so it's simple. Now, the last tense is the futuro anteriore. What happens with the futuro anteriore? So, the futuro, let's say, is here, is a dot here on this timeline. It's happening. It's gonna happen. It will happen. In Italian, we make no difference. So, we don't have the different types of future like in English. We just have this future. But with the futuro anteriore, it's also about an action that will happen, but will happen here. So, between the present and the future. So, uh, as the, with the futuro anteriore, it's actually like with the trapassato. So, you use it in combination with other tenses. You, um, so, you use it when it's more actions combined. And, but, what's going to happen? That first, the action with the futuro anteriore will happen. Then, the action with the futuro. So, um, the futuro anteriore is for something that is going to happen before something in the future, before something else. And so, this, thinking like this will help you tremendously for how to use the tenses. And uh, again, this was a video of, in general, how to use them. So, go to this, to um, the previous videos if you want more detail about each tense. I will link everything in the description. And so I hope this video uh, is helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos, if you want to be notified. And please, if you like my videos and you appreciate my lessons, support me on Patreon. Become a patron. I will be tremendously grateful. And so, and of course, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you want me to talk about a topic in particular, feel free to post it in the comments below. So that's it. See you in the next video. Ciao, ciao!